Hey there everyone, this is Lifebreak, welcome back to my playthrough featuring Odyssey 3, and in this part we are going to get started on the 14th floor, but first, we're going to go to the bistro, and report Aunt Agony for the three bigger books, which are amazing, I love these things, and it's a free, it's three free bigger books, and I believe they give vitality, or strength, I don't remember, no, no, it's gonna be vitality, it's worrying so much I was thinking I might get a hole in my stomach, I see. So the ant eater was behind the massacre. I'm hoping Ricky will be able to sort things out in her heart now. Still, you're unstoppable, are you not? I am most impressed. Did anyone else real not remember that Ricky was a girl? <laughs> We're serious. Here's your word, we're taking it. Good working as always, come back again. Three bigger books. And Reska skyrockets to level 10. Awesome get core dump and yes this is Reska's first time on duty I've already gone ahead and gave her the basic to market and one level in camp mastery so she can at least revive people for now I'm focusing on this I'm trying to get core dump I don't want to level it up just yet it's not right necessary right now It'll be necessary later uh blue box now the main focus <clears throat> for this stratum is going to be getting the blue bot up especially but the red and yellows are going to also going to go up i'm also going to make sure to get more into sleep mode and uh core dump as we go along because that's going to be her it's it's an easy way for her to regain tp and i want her to be able to use her chasers almost every match it's another thing yeah there's a there's a little thing about yggdrawas is that they're really hard to build Especially because there are so many different thoughts to go into a Yggdroid when you're making one, and I guess I'll discuss this as I head towards the, towards the target floor today. I'm gonna go ahead and save the game. And it's that the Yggdroid is extremely hard to build without frustrating yourself, or without building another team just to base around it itself. And some people have the same problem with Shogun. Usually, the Shogun's easier to convert into a team, but the Yggdroid seems to give people trouble. And that's because the Yggdroid does two things. It will, it either has, you can use the bots for chasing, just because of the 6th slot take. However, the con is, it's taking up the 6th slot, so she won't be using the boss fights. Because I need that slot for Zara Bushin and uh, Mina Bushin when, when she gets pen, pin cushion. Or if I decide to give her a pin cushion. I'm still getting Mina Bushin, and I should be paying attention, because I haven't actually given her that point yet. Okay, Bushin, Kagru at 3. Awesome. Also, I will be getting uh, a Tori later. Uh, the primary thing that's going to go on is that I'm going to be bodyguarding Reska almost every t every turn because she is so weak. She is extremely weak right now. I'm going to get a red bot out there, and we are going to get an epic charge out. And it's it's important that of course Reska does not die. Reska dies. Well, I'm doing it wrong. Okay, summon a red bot, as planned, just keep bodyguarding her, because these monsters will have no problem taking out Reska. Uh, you attempt to headbind that, uh, I forced her guitar with a with two headbinds, to help, help her be a bit more efficient, since she isn't quite high enough level to be doing the same damage as everyone else, otherwise she'd be doing really decent damage, because they do have a lot of strength, regardless of their sad choice of different weapons. Okay, that's gone. Bodyguards up, binary fire, kill, red bot chases, does 6 damage. It sucks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so pitiful right now. <sighs> but there's not much I can do for Zara right now. That's a lot of items. She doesn't even have waste on her. I'm getting a lot of items. Like, that's a lot of items. Uh, I think I got like every single possible item I could have gotten. Oh boy. Alright. Now on the 14th... Thratum will start you up here, and it's going to be a big uh, gate circle. You basically you have to go in a complete and total circle to get back where you started, and you have to go every which way in order to get other places. And of all the floors in the entire game, this is the one I always, almost always forget everything about. I remember two events, and how to avoid the FOEs, and I remember the some of the quests for this floor, but besides that, mine is equal to blown. 
There's yes, there's shortcuts in here, clearly, to get to the exit a lot easier. With a gate at the end and a switch on the right, right next to the gate, and the moment you open this gate, you're gonna be forced to the southern side. So before we do that, let's check for shortcuts. Next, right cat it right across from the entrance. So you can go straight to the exit. Also, we can run into silverbacks now. Uh, Amna's main job is just make sure Reska doesn't die. All, Res uh, all Reska has to do is make sure she doesn't drop below 13 TP, which isn't going to be hard. I'm going to get a, a core dump. I never did realize if the silverback was weak to bolt or not, so I'm going to check that too. Supposing it doesn't instantly die right now. No, it's neutral to all the elements and, and or has resistances. And now Reska is going to gain 15 TP every turn, so long as she lives. Not that hard. And we'll just basically just focus the attacks and fling some fire over to the Deep Marine, cause just, just to mimic him being so bad at his job. And he's using Rush, and the thing is, the player has access to this skill, but when he uses Rush, he doesn't do anything. <laughs> really. His rush doesn't hit more than one person, so it's always been an interesting thing to see him use that attack. It's basically just a stronger bash attack or something like that. Also, this is going to do wonders for Reska's levels. She's going to start skyrocketing before she even starts leveling out with the same as these guys. Monarch March Max, thank goodness we finally got that down. Uh, right now I'll just focus on leveling up the bots to make them stronger. And I'll worry about leveling up more into sleep mode and more into... A core dump to make it less cost to make it more cost effective. But otherwise, as I said later on, when Fresco starts being ca caught up with the rest of the team, her her bot chasers are going to be amazing. Or at least I can envision that it's going to be amazing. It's going to be especially good in the fifth stratum once we get there. So let's actually get started on this this routine win tactic so we don't die. Because Amna is actually uh, even though Amna has 400 HP, she actually has slightly slightly lower defense than normal, so I have to keep my head out and head into the game here. Uh, Reska, you set up a yellow bot, please. And other charge. And we just really want to get rid of the silver silverback as fast as possible. Hopefully by mean an instant kill like that. Wow. <laughs> totally called it. Not on purpose. And now we just have to kill off the swordfish. I have pretty good confidence that even if a swordfish attack is there, it's not going to kill her. And it's going to be especially useful later when Reska has higher HP. Ow. Y yeah, see, just... Not hurting that much, and the yellow bot was useless, but it, you know... Sarah's just going to level up like mad at the first few levels, and I've already discussed that. Anyways, you'll instantly close behind this. You look to your right. Oh, right, FOE. And here's the red FOE of the stratum. There are two red FOEs in this stratum. There's one that does physical and one that does elemental. Both suck to fight, and especially if you have to fight them at the same time, like you will have to at a certain point. I don't remember when. But anyways, there. yes, there is an FOE behind this gate. But... Don't start mapping around that gate, because, once again, I have difficulty seeing past that thing, so clearly we're going to be forced to the southern side. So we open this, we go that, going that way just doesn't seem like, like a bright idea. And you'll notice, oh crap, this doesn't close behind me, so, yeah, you have to go to the next gate, and essentially what you're doing is trapping the FOE once the gates do close, is that you trap the FOE in a different area, so the next time you open the gates, it's going to be in that area rather than where it spawned originally. It's not too important that it's in an alternate area. There's a few tricks that involve it having to be in an alternate area from what I remember, but otherwise my memory is just bad. I've already said that, and really, it's true. Uh, what's your, Is this a one-way shortcut? Are you a one-way shortcut? No, you're a two-way shortcut. Okay. I'll take that. Don't know why they put a two-way short shortcut here, but... Oh, it's probably because you can't get back otherwise. Um... Well, you could open the gate again, but then you just die. In addition, with... Well, Vincent isn't much of a factor. The, the fact that Vincent's gone means nothing, because Reska's the new Vincent. The only thing that's different now is that I don't have alertness. And that's not too big of a, of, of a deal. And additionally, if Reska's not working out in the end... 
Vincent is always welcome back. Because at least it doesn't matter what Vincent's level is. Vincent's useful no matter what level he is. Camp Master is at max right now. He has max. He has almost max alertness. He he has max primal drums. He he smacks his debuffs out. And he's just insanely useful. And it's just really a big giant S bend. I don't know. I seriously don't remember the map that well. I remember spots and stuff, but it's really starting to get to me. And we got Big Snake Head and Introduction to New Enemy, the Pitaka- uh, Metarmigen. Metarmigen has an attack that will lower your offense that is really, really annoying! Big Snake Head is just a jerk, as usual. So, once again, Anti-Volt, which I have finally maxed. So now his torpedo will do nothing, instead of something. Um, we'll just focus on taking care of the Metarmigen first. I believe the Metarmigen is- uh, Pitar, uh, again is weak to fire, so we'll just, we'll see if that's the case. No, never mind, it instantly died, we'll never know if Mina keeps instantly killing these things, like that, and as I said before, big snakeheads, jerks, I hate them. Jerks, I hate them. It's really. Okay, here's the deal. You use anti-bolt again. You res... So she, I want her to get EXP, otherwise she's not getting anywhere. And you do nothing, and you do nothing. It's really, we, I want to make sure that Fresca's getting stuff done. She's not getting stuff done. Well, why did I bring her? Okay, she's okay. Big snake head down. Four thousand EXP up the drain. Fresca needs three thousand the next level. About five more fights compared to everyone else's one hundred. <laughs> Pretty much pretty much how it goes. Eventually, it will be to where you have to grind in order to get things done. Okay, we have a gate here. We don't have... Oh, okay, there's nothing else here, unless I'm missing shortcuts, like a genius. And yes, I will miss shortcuts like a genius, because as I said, this is the least memorable floor in the game. I memorized the hell out of the next... the next 15th and 16th floors, because they involve pits. And the map's so memorable there. Here, I'm just gonna be wandering around, it's like, all I know is that there's a gate in the center and the beginning, and the rest of this is just like, uh And I'm sure you guys don't want to hear me about my incompetencies on this floor, but I have to mention- Oh! I just remembered this. This is actually really important, now that I've memorized that. As you pass through the halls of the Dynasty Temple, you spy monsters up ahead and stop. Silently, to, uh, silently observing the beast, you notice a silvery object at their feet. You hesitate to enter a battle with them, but the object on the floor has piqued your curiosity. You need this object! You weigh the risk against the potential reward for making your decision. Sneak up and take it, take it by force, leave it be, let's sneak up and take it. I believe if we have a ninja this will work. Upon your decision to sneak up on the object, Mina volunteers to apply ninja expertise to it. After confirming that none of the rest of the party objects, Mina suddenly disappears. Mina snatches up the string object and returns, quick as lightning. It appears as a, a silver ring, and however, it's too large for a ring, yet too small for a bracelet. This item is important. If you have a ninja, it automatically guarantees it, otherwise it's actually a chance. I think the first, uh, first floor platypus is kind of chance. It appears to the silver ring, however, it's too large for a ring, yet too small for a bracelet. Still unsure of what exactly it is, you tuck the silver ring away and inside your pack. Silver ring's important. The ninja will enhance this event to make sure you get it without having to get into the fight with the silver ring there. It's important that you grab that. It does have plot relevance, or at least a quest relevance, if I'm wrong about it being story relevant. And it's really... You have to pick it up, because otherwise you're gonna miss stuff out. Is this a camp spot? Please say yes. No. This is the way of progress. Of course. Of course there'd be such things. Uh, do we have shortcuts anywhere? Anywhere? We got shortcuts? Uh, no. We've got a switch at the end of the hallway, and another gate here. Also, notice that there's not a lot of doors so much as there is gates, and... Just remember, as long as you can pass through the gates, you can just color them in to memorize that they're gates. We've seen this set already. Alright, we got Silver Snake Skin. I think we may have already gone. No, we haven't gotten it yet. I wish I would have given us that item earlier, because I believe this gives either an armor or a good weapon. To get- if you get the skin. Um... Vincent would also be a very good thing to come here when I need the more items, because the five, uh, 5 extra percent is awesome. And... have conditional drops, it's never gonna be below 
and waste not just a waste on those, but whatever. I, we've already seen a similar set to this, so I'm assume I'm gonna assume it's gonna make an ass out of me, but I'm gonna assume you know what this is gonna look like. So see you back. All right, that didn't take too long, but of course, cutting out fights does save actually save a lot more time than I'm thinking. Also, the from this point forward, it's pretty much however long my TP lasts and we go back home. Kind of standard, so whenever Zara starts running low on TP, I just teleport home and call it a day. Unless there is a nearby camp spot. <clears throat> or a camp spot that is easily accessible. And I have tents. Once again, I have forgotten to bring tents, so basically when we run out of TP, I'm just gonna end off the episodes. That's how it's gonna work in around the first, fourth strat. In the fifth strat, I'm gonna change this policy a little bit, but it's not gonna matter too much. Also, you may have noticed I've returned a little bit more to my walkthrough. <laughs> style. Uh, more deep mediums. Um, no, you have to keep bodyguarding. <laughs> Reska just cannot live if you don't bodyguard her. Uh, binary fire. I think, I keep thinking that the Petard Midgen is weak to fire, so I'm gonna keep thinking and saying that it's weak to fire, but I'm never gonna know, because Mina just keeps killing it before I can get to it. It may also have an item. No, no, it doesn't. I'm thinking of a different enemy that has a fire weakness that has a special item if you kill it with fire. It's called a Hypno Owl. We'll get to it later. Uh, right now, that's not important. We'll just kill them. We'll kill the one that isn't headbound because the one that is headbound is isn't gonna touch us anytime soon. No threat of instant killing Mina. And we just go through this door. Did I miss mark something? No. So wait, this is for reals. We have a shortcut. Yes, okay, good. I believe we reached this on the other side. Yes, okay, good. Also, the I've already said this, we're gonna get to item spots whenever we find the quest that deals with the item points. There's always one, somewhere. So, that's been covered. Oh, oh, right, we have- this is one of those times where we have to trick an FOE into a room. Derp. I just remembered. <sighs> really? This is getting kind of old, <laughs> especially since I really hate the big snakehead. Uh, another good thing is I have a big bolt prophecy, but I don't have bolt prophecy yet. Kill the snakehead, because really, it's really annoying. Thank you! Oh, and there's the offense reduction. If you have in- oh hey, look, it is weak to fire. I'm gonna make sure that it's weak to, to just fire if it's weak to every element, because I kind of knew the fire weakness, I just don't know if it's weak to anything else. But the offense lowering is not going to affect your petrification chances or any status chances, so if you're using stuff like that like I am, then it's not as big of a deal as if you're just using a purely offensive team and drops your offense and it's like, oh crap. I think it's in our core dump level. Alright. Where was the switch? Oh, it's back here, okay. So, open this up, and I believe this will lower this stuff away. And like an idiot, I walked right into it! Oh! Okay, use Wind Tactic and try to run away. Using Wind Tactic will at least save her ass. And I didn't look at her name. Alright, I didn't look at her name, but yeah, you don't want to be fighting her right now. That's the magical variant of the red FOEs and that she will give you intelligence uh, intelligence books to increase your tech and stuff like that, but not important. Okay. Which one of these closes behind me? Extremely nice no, because she's like right on my tail. And if you're... Okay. Close! Thank you. And then you lock her into her room. Then you go back to the switch, open it, and then you get to run backwards. So much fun. Because now she's after your ass again. And we go through here. Okay. Now, now that we've had some magic happen, pardon me. Excuse me. <sighs> I had to sneeze. I'm sorry. But, and of course, if I make a loud sneeze, it's not going to sound pretty on video. So I decided to be friendly. I also do that when I make loud sniffle noises. Uh, meet the other spawn. The other spawn is weak to physical ice attacks. Special emphasis on physical ice attacks. 
Uh, here, let me show you, otherwise you might not believe me, but... Essentially, if you fling regular ice at it, like I'll show you now, it won't do as much as if you use physical ice, at least from what my brother tells me. Yeah, see? But if you use physical ice, you're doing it right. But in order to get this thing's item, you have to kill it with ice. And since it has resistance to magical ice, and that's kind of a problem. So if you can kill it off with it, you can kill it off with a magical. You can kill it off the magical ice attack and get its item, but it's preferred that you use a physical ice attack to get the item. So I'm just gonna start granting freeze to everyone and testing for if it has any other weaknesses. Also, if I, for say, gave Mina ice and she instant killed it, it would still count. Also, it lowered my ice resistance. It's great. Okay, so, Sarah has it, Mina needs it. Attack, defend. And we're gonna see where this gets us. That didn't look like it had the ice element attached to it. I thought I gave her ice arms. Oh! Oh, I just remembered! Oh! The freeze arms can wear off if, if it uses its ice resistance down attack. It's because the freeze arms gives you resistance to ice attacks. I completely forgot that. But that's okay, it's not too big of a setback, and we will get its item eventually. Dogs. Just dogs. Spoil my mood. But okay. We're not quite out of TP yet, so this is just gonna keep going. We're actually almost out. But I completely- as I said, I completely forgot that it, uh... If it used its ice resistance down attack, it would remove any freeze arms that were on my teammates. And as I said before, physical ice attacks are your way. So I'm guessing I'm gonna recommend Ice Barrage if you want to get its item, because Ice Barrage is a physical ice ailment from the Arbalist class, and most people would like using Arbalist. So if you have an Ice Barrage, that's what I recommend, because it can't the other spawn can't get rid of it. It's gonna cost you a measly ATP or however much you invested in it, and we'll just get this shortcut down. Uh, we have a gate opener back here. I'm guessing that's the open the middle gate we were at just earlier. It went... It's not too far off. So, what's this way? Is there treasure this way? <sighs> oh boy. Yes, yes, thank you. I always like it when my ice resistance is decreased and I have to use my freeze arms twice and just in order to apply it. Okay, just use thunder. Oh, that's all- that- yeah, right. The other spawns are weak to bolt, but you don't get their item unless you kill them with ice. And they will summon more themselves, but if you let three of them appear, they will merge together and it's catastrophe and it's just don't let it happen. So we're just gonna... I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna give it to... Oh boy. Okay, this is not gonna be good. So I'm gonna you hit that, you hit that, you hit this. You cast Bolt on that, you finish that off. Awesome, so we got at least one special item. 56, 27. Uh, does become an infinite spawn loop and she no longer has the element. No, I can apply it, like, almost immediately, so... Freeze, attack... Ice star... Attack... Okay, that's down. That's not down, because it resists ice magic, and it's just- Yes! All three of them became Dryad statues, and that's their special item. Dryad statue statues just sell from word. They're actually relatively easy to get if you have an Arbalist. So if you're in a crunch for money, and you happen to be exploring the Forest Stratum, it, it's, a, it's a good way. It's just like using uh, getting the red tails off of claw shrooms back in the Forest Stratum. It's, it's a good way of getting money after you get the items from it. Uh, I've- Everything's already open. So, oh, that's right. This let that back there let the F we back in and allowed me to continue, I guess. But I can't go back. 
Actually, you could sequence break through here if you can kill the FOE, but yeah, good luck with that. Even at my level, I don't think I'm quite capable of taking that out. At least not until I can beat the Freed Savages, which are the FOEs in the previous floor. And you know what? I think we've done enough today. I'm gonna get out of here. Hey there, everyone. As always, I think you... Oh, right! Awesome! I have a message for, for you from a certain someone. It's a little long, but please hear me out. Thank you. It's a heartwarming story of a brother and sister from long ago. Hey there, everyone. This has been Lionfreak. As always, thank you for watching. You can say bye now. Bye.